Hello, my name is Attila Bakos and in this video I'm gonna show you an issue with Fujifilm video files that no one seems to have noticed or no one cares to talk about it. Recently I purchased an old 5D Mark III just to be able to play with Magic Lantern RAW and I wanted to see how the image compares to Fuji's recordings. I shot a few clips from my window and I noticed something interesting. What you see is a crop of a UHD video frame coming from the 5D Mark III. I want you to take a look at this tree, especially the red leaves. When I switch over to the Fuji, they are all gone. Here I use 400 Mbps H.265 All Eye recording option. The clip was shot using F-Log and I applied nothing but a color space conversion, some contrast and saturation to make it match up with the Canon clip. Let's take a look at it again. Okay, my first thought was that it's either Fuji's 420 chroma subsampling or maybe 400 Mbps is still not enough. So I encoded this 5D Mark III clip to H.265 and I only used 100 Mbps instead of 400. And this is the result. It's basically indistinguishable from the Canon. We can safely say that it's not the chroma subsampling and it's not the bandwidth that's causing this issue. At this point I still wasn't 100% sure that it's not some kind of a user error so I took my cameras outside to shoot something similar. I also took an EOS R with me just to see another camera shooting UHD with a compressed codec even though it's just 8-bit internal. So here we are with three clips. This is from the 5D Mark III. This is from the Fuji and this is from the EOS R. I adjusted these clips so that they have about the same contrast and saturation. I didn't have a tripod with me so the framing is a bit different but it's irrelevant in this case. So let's zoom in and take a look at those red leaves. In the raw clip they can easily be distinguished from the green ones. However, when you switch over to the Fuji, the colors are all washed out. So this is the raw and this is the Fuji. You don't really know where the green colors stop and where the red starts, it's all kind of blurred together. And if you check the clip from the EOS R, even though it has less detail, you can easily tell what's green and what's red. Just take a look at this area here. So this is the EOS R, this is the Fuji, it's all blurred together, and this is the RAW. Again this is the Fuji, and this is the EOS R. To understand what's happening here we need to take a look at the chroma channels because the H.264 and H.265 clips are not encoded in RGB, they use the YCBCR encoding. The Y channel is the Luma channel, it carries brightness information, while the CB and CR are chroma channels, they carry color information. The Y channel's resolution is the resolution of the clip, while the CB and CR channels have half the resolution horizontally and vertically in case of a 420 chroma subsampling, which the Fuji and the EOS R uses. In this case, if you have a UHD recording, then the Y channel is UHD, and the CB and CR channels are full HD. As human eyes are more sensitive to black and white information, you can safely reduce the bandwidth, compress or subsample the chroma components without any noticeable quality loss in the resulting RGB image. However, Fujifilm takes this to the extreme and that's what I'm about to show you. So here we are with the previous clips and let's just switch over to another version. And here you will see a small DCTL OFX plugin that I developed that converts the RGB image back to Y or to grayscale representations of CB or CR. This allows us to see what was in the original H.264 and H.265 files before Resolve converted them to RGB. It has matrices from different standards and we're gonna use the 601 for the Fuji and the 709 for the EOS R to get what was originally in the source files. 
For RAW, it doesn't matter because it was never encoded to YCBCR and I'm gonna use it only for comparison purposes. So let's just use the 709. The plugin also has a linear contrast slider for the chroma channels to help visualizing them because they are really flat when represented in grayscale, especially in a log file. We're gonna take a look at the CR channel. I already set up the plugin for all clips, so I'm not gonna modify anything. If we have good color detail, then the red leaves will be a brighter gray and the green ones will be darker. And this is exactly what we see here if YouTube compression doesn't kill my presentation. I'll just zoom in to make sure. As you see where you have the red leaves, the CR channel shows a brighter gray. And where you have the green leaves, the CR channel shows a darker gray. Let's just switch over to the Fuji. And this is the CR channel of the Fuji. Really, it's, it's like an oil painting, no details whatsoever. Night and day difference when I compare this to RAW. And when you zoom into the problematic area, you can see that the CR channel is just a blurry mess. So that's why you can't tell which leaves are red and which ones are green. You just see blobs of some reddish color and blobs of green. Okay, let's take a look at the EOS R. And this is the CR channel of the EOS R. As you can see, even if it has slightly less luma detail, the chroma channels are way more detailed and you can tell which leaves are red and which ones are green. Let's just compare it with the Fuji. Night and day difference. And this is just 8-bit, while Fuji is 10-bit. And just like before, I created a H.265 100 Mbps version of the 5D Mark III RAW file. It's nice and detailed. And the chroma channels have even more detail than the EOS R. Another example, this is from the EOS R and this is from the Fuji. When you take a look at these images, they both look nice. You don't notice any issue whatsoever with the Fuji. However, a trained eye can notice that the trees at the top show more color variations in the EOS R. Let's zoom in because YouTube compression might render the difference non-existent. So this is the EOS R and this is the Fuji. EOS R, Fuji. As you can see, the EOS R has more color, and the reason for that is this. This is the CR channel of the EOS R, and this is the CR channel of the Fuji. Massive difference. EOS R, Fuji. EOS R, Fuji. Let's zoom out and take a look at it as a whole. So this is the X-T3, and this is the EOS R. It's a massive difference. So I started wondering if there's a way around this. Maybe it's just the internal processing and using an external recorder will solve the problem. Actually, I don't have an external recorder that I can take with me, but I have something better for this comparison, a Blackmagic Decklink recorder that allows me to record the uncompressed HDMI feed. My only problem was that it's in my desktop computer, so I could go only as far as the HDMI cable allowed, in this case to my window. As you can see, the internal and external files look identical. There is no visible difference. And this is the EOS R. The framing and the crop is different, sorry about that, but it won't matter much. Let's switch everything to CR mode. As you can see, the external recording is better, 
You don't have those weird artifacts, but it still looks like an oil painting. Just take a look at the EOS R, where you can actually see the branches and the details of the foliage. So what we have here is pretty unfortunate, because apparently there is no way around the chroma smoothing, even the HDMI feed is heavily processed. Before ending this video, I'd like to point out that in-camera JPEGs are encoded in YCBCR as well, and they also use chroma smoothing, although the effects are not that severe. This is just a boring shot from my window, and as you take a look at it, the Fuji and the EOS R are pretty close. So this is the Fuji, this is the EOS R. Fuji, EOS R. You won't see much of a difference even when zooming in, mostly because the trees already lost their autumn colors, so there's not much color variability. But still, if I switch to the CR channel, you will see that the EOS R has way more detail in the chroma channel, just like in video mode. So this is the EOS R, and this is the Fuji. EOS R, Fuji. Let's zoom in a bit. So this is the Fuji, EOS R. Fuji, EOS R. And let's just go to this wall. And if you take a look at it, you can see the rows of bricks on the Canon picture, whereas on the Fuji it looks like one solid wall with a few colors. So this is the EOS R and this is the Fuji. And if we switch back to color mode, you can see that the mortar between the bricks is grey on the Canon picture, as it should be, while it has the color of the bricks on the Fuji. So if you print large pictures and you care about all the tiny color details, then I suggest you shoot RAW, because the camera captures all the color detail, it's just missing from the in-camera JPEGs. So again, this is the EOS R, and this is the Fuji. If I want to summarize what we have here is this. Fuji applies some very heavy processing to the chroma channels in video mode which results in loss of color when compared to other cameras. They even process the HDMI stream, there's no way around this. It's there in all the picture profiles, not just F-Log. I check clips from many cameras including Sony, Panasonic, Nikon, Canon and Zcam and none of them show this behavior. What I find worrying is the fact that many people like the video coming from Fuji precisely because it has less color noise than the competition, while in reality it's just heavy chroma smoothing which is hard to notice. I purchased my first Fujifilm camera 4 years ago and it took me this long to notice this even though I work a lot with colors. I'm not saying that you should trash your Fujifilm camera because a lot of people create wonderful videos with it. And no one seems to talk about this, so this is apparently not an issue. However, once you train your eyes for this, Fujifilm images will look a tiny bit flat, because having more color detail creates depth that you cannot recreate by other methods. I'd like to emphasize that it's more of a feeling than something you see right away. If this doesn't matter to you, it's absolutely fine, but if it does, spread the word, do your own tests, report to Fuji, maybe we get a fix for this in the future. This is all, thank you for watching, see you next time.